be me. Admit to not knowing how to use green text, but decide to use the gimmick anyway. Think it's too much work, and just decide to leave this here anyway. Pregum skip to the actual game if you just want to hear about the game. I live in the Black Gas Lands of Black Gas Lands, a state here in America called North Carolina. A place where it is hard to find a group, and even harder to find a good group. After a lot of searching I finally landed in a group in the next town over. A collage town with a population barely over 2,500. A town so poorly ran it as four or two part stores, and nothing in the form of a recreational businesses. After my third return visit to the game store to ask how finding a group was going one of the people who worked there took an interest in joining my group, and got some of her friends to join. My sister who wanted to come with me to see what the shop looked like decided to also join bringing out Mary Band to me DM my sister wizard shop worker druid changes to fighter shop workers friend bard shop workers friends boyfriend undecided as a point of reference we were going to run 5e the setting Tamriel the Elder Scrolls Skyrim universe the setting is Skyrim is 10 years after oblivion that is lore accurate in terms of the written lore of the wiki and the games before Skyrim. Session 0 comes, we agree to meet up at 12 when the store opens, people run late, I don't really mind, shit happens, ect, I start making the opening dungeon, while I wait someone else walks into the store, excited by the prospect of playing in Skyrim, he asks to join, I shrug because my ideal player count is 3-4, but two of the players are an hour late so they might just drop anyway. After about two hours I hear a phone go off, the fighter answers, between my ungodly hearing, the fact that her phone was set a little too loud, and the only three people in the room were me, my sister, and her I overhear her conversation. I hear a calm and collected voice, oh hey sorry for running late, we'll be there soon, as another voice sounding akin to the hiss of a cornered cat interrupts him, babe don't go so fast, you're driving too fast, don't you love me, I deflate a little, looking in the proverbial face of the shitstorm I am about to take to the face. 30 minutes later the fighter's friend comes, barred with his boyfriend. Session 0 starts, but not before someone else walks into the store, sits at our table, and starts a conversation. Power Wizard. The Power Wizard is a rather nice guy. An aloof fellow who sometimes his jokes in a serious tone, and vice versa. So you can never really tell where his jokes end, and his opinions begin. The bard come in and sits down at my table. We exchange pleasantries. He apologizes for being late. I tell him it's okay I am just excited to start. His boyfriend sits down at the furthest table and starts to talk with the fighter. It may seem from this that I am the type of person that eavesdrops a lot. But I promise you that I don't. I just have great hearing and a lot of people talk way too loud. These people notwithstanding. Fighter let's go don't you want to set with the rest of us over there? Walking shitstorm no, fighter why not? Walking shitstorm I don't like his face. I bet has a trash DM, DM, fighter. Walking shitstorm I'm not going to play. Walking shitstorm babe, why did you bring me here? Oh god what have I done? At this point I had full knowledge of what I was getting myself into. There was no doubt in my mind that this was going downhill. Hell saying this is not rock bottom is giving it too much credit, but I needed to ride out the storm, and see. I didn't not know what yet, but looking back at it my morbid curiosity did not let me down. It might have been terrible yet it was unique, and it gave me a story I will always cherish, and all it took was about 16 hours of my life counting commute. Nothing really got done in session 0. Shitstorm seemed dead set to take at least one person away from our talks about what they enjoyed about D&D, &D, and how I could give them a better experience. I was trying to be cordial with Shitstorm, but for some reason he hated me, and his boyfriend was apologetic, and said Shitstorm would not come to the actual game he came. No one else, including my sister, seemed to think this was anything but normal for a session zero. After about an hour I ended it and agreed to meet next week at four. The last thing I did was ask everyone what class they were going to play. The fighter was still under the impression she would play druid. My sister chose wizard. Bard chose bard, and walk up hash sign one chose druid. Walk up number two just looked at all of us and said this seems like it's going to be fun. Without asking me if he could join the group, he looked me in the eyes, no hammer in his voice, 
and, no shit, this is exactly what he said. I will be a divination wizard human feet variant lucky. I'm going to destroy your campaign, and there is nothing you can do to stop me. If you kill off my character you'll just make another divination midge, with a mixture of shock from the audacity of his statement, and denial at what was staring me in the face I thought he was joking. I mean, who would actually say that? Making a mental note of this I made the beg the Elder Scrolls equivalent of the Illuminati. A group of powerful divination midges, with lead walls, with gorgon paint, and sanctuary spells, and continued to world build. The game session won after waiting for two hours, and fighter realized the party comp was screwed and she became a fighter, because she thought no one else was going to show up. Everyone besides my sister, and the fighter showed up late, and they all forgot to make their character sheets. Two hours later we are ready to play the actual game. With our new party being fighter, person who works there, wizard, sister, wizard number two, power gamer, bard cool guy and druid walk in. Power wizard has a stat array of strength 14, dexterity 16, constitution 16, intelligence 20, wisdom 16 and charisma 14. As a human feat variant for those of you who don't know why the strong human variants cannot put their plus ones into the same stat, I call him on this. He tells me I am wrong. I pull out my PHB, and show him that he's wrong, and that even if I was not I am the DM so I am right. He pulls out his phone, and showed me some random website as proof, and looks at me like I am targeting him. Just wanting to play the game I said whatever let's start. I describe the scene. Ask for the players to describe their characters, awkward science. I just skip that part, they're all in a cell with one pile of straw. I have everyone roll intimidation as a joke to see who gets to sit on it. Everyone loves it, fighter and her baby get highest roll. Everyone is curious why she has a baby, and ask her out of character. She informs them that her character was raped by one of the vampires and this child is from that rape. Everyone looks at me like I'm a freak. I tell them it was her backstory, and not my idea. They shrug. I talk about how their time here has been a haze, and that their characters, one by one, have escaped the vampire's hold over them. Bart decides to use his face step to escape the jail cell, grabs the keys, and proceeds to unlock all of the jail cells. I say how do you convince the other prisoners to follow you? He rolls a d20, an act 20, a persuasion check. What do you say to? He points to the dice. The prisoners motivated by your speech wait for you to lead the charge. I place their tokens on the map. Bard moves theirs towards the exit, and places his own behind him. Half of the party decide to stay in their cell, and I have to give them that do you guys want to play D and D or note talk to which they responded we're just playing our characters. Defeated I say fine, and I split the party. The fighter, druid, and power wizard stay in the cell, as the bard and wizard decide they actually want to play the game today. After an encounter I reward XP to the players who were, you know, actually playing. The power wizard starts to write XP on his paper, and I say wait you weren't contributing so you do not get XP. Dumbfounded the power wizard looks at me, and says WTF is wrong with you, why are you punishing me for playing my character? He shows me his character sheet, a chaotic evil LVL1 wizard with the coward floor, and the Eldritch Blast cantrip. I inform him that Blast is not on your spell list so you can't have it, and that flaws are something that is supposed to make the game harder, something that makes the game interesting, and something you're meant to overcome. Not words you put on your character sheet, so you get free XP. Power Wizard looks displeased, he states that if my character would have known that he would not get XP, if he did not fight he would have went with them, and the others just nod in agreement. I move their minis to the rest of the group, smiled, and said let's pretend you never split the party. No words they just wrote their XP down. Satisfied that the gang was back together we went through a couple more encounters with the power wizard saying we rest after every encounter. And gets mad when I interrupt their rest with their encounter. Because resting in a vampire's lair should come with zero consequence. Eventually the party makes it to a locked door. The storage room on the other side. No thief, on one knows how to pick a lock, druid decides to pull off one of his scales, and tries to pick the lock, nat one his scale breaks, and lodges itself in the locky way trying to open. Bart decides to try to persuade the door open, nat 20. I say the door is an inanimate object, 
but since your god is Shigaroth it works for some reason. The door opens, party loves it. At this point I realize that the party do not really care for a story. They just want to be murder hobos, and do murder hobo things. The party decides to rest again, even though they just did, and the only person who has lost HP was the druid when he pulled a scale off. PCs look at the loot sheet. Open the PHB, and decide to take all of the fine clothes the vampires had for their slaves to sell, and not to pick up any of the food, or water skins because they could sell it for more per pound than they could rations. Druid rolls nature on the silk 17. I describe how you can tell by the thickness of the silk it has come from a giant spider. Bard rolls a random perception check, I tell him nothing's there. Bard tells everyone else to roll too maybe there is more loot here. Everyone rolls, Power Wizard argues that the three prisoners that are still alive should also get to roll too. Somewhere an at 20 is rolled, players are pissed when I say you find nothing. They argue that with a 20 they should find something. I for Sepam, I give up. I go into great description of how all the PCs and their three slaves companions tear up all of the floorboards, and find nothing. They then go on to the walls the orc NPC picks up a bookshelf, and finds a door behind it with a key next to it. The power wizard says finally let's go. I move my boss encounter, a vampire blood flend with his pack of giant spiders he calls dogs from where it is, to this cave. Players go in. Players roll perception every 20 feet or so. Caves open up. A crazy vampire wood elf is betting a giant spider he believes is a dog named Busco. With his other two dogs eating other blood cattle mummified in their silk. I roll perception he passes. Then I roll initiative. He calls for his dogs to assemble and talks about how happy he is for more guests. Power wizard goes next. Uses charm person. Vampire succeeds. Power wizard evokes lucky. I tell him he can't. But I am too lazy to get the book again, and the other players who barely know the basic rules take his side, so I roll my eyes and re-roll. And again. And again. On the last ray roll he fails. Power Wizard satisfied with himself starts talking about how he is going to walk up to all of the spiders and kill them for XP. Then use a fire spell on the vampire. He asks how much XP he gets. I tell him if you attack one of the spiders the vampire will become hostile again. He says BS. I ask my sister for her arcane spellbook card, because she also took charm person. He reads the card. He says whatever I still get XP for ending the encounter right? No. WTF, why are you punishing me for playing my character? I sigh he leads the party out of the cave, not even asking if there is an exit. Between games, between sessions I decided to switch from 5e to this homebrew based off of 5e that I found. I told everyone of the change, and the fighter and bard asked me to do it for them. I said sure. It would be good for me to learn the system anyway. It's normal 5e with the optional rule for magic points instead of spell slots, different trace bonuses, and birth signs. Overall I would say an improvement, but it depends if you like having powerful racial bonuses that make some races better at some classes than others like I do. Power Wizard texts me and asks if we can just play regular 5e, because the homebrew was needlessly complicated, and stupid. I told him no. He said fine. A week goes by. It's for everyone is late again. The power wizard comes in an hour late. He has no character sheet. He says oh I lost it he'll just make a new character. I give him the homebrew book I printed out, and put into a binder, about 200 pages. He starts to roll ability scores two rolls and I come over. I see he has written two 18s, before he notices me he rolls, sick 4, 1 me 1 he writes down a 16. He picks up the dice I let him borrow and asks me what I want. I shrug, telling him I am just waiting for you to make your character so we can start, maybe I can help you. He rolls, we make eye contact, 4 2, 1 me 1. He writes a 7 down, and tells me that he can do it on his own. While we wait the owner's son comes, has young, but cool, asks to join I say why not. He takes the warlock section out of the binder and makes his character. He finishes before the power wizard. I look over the warlock sheet nothing's wrong, ability scores a 16 with an 8, a 7, couple of 10s, and a 12. Power wizard says he's done. I ask to see his character sheet. He gets pissed off, and asks why I don't trust him. 
Try to keep the situation from escalating by calmly replying I have to make sure everything is right. I did the same thing with his. Our new warlock nods backing me up. He hands me his sheet everything is 16 or higher besides his 7 strength, with his highest number being 20 in his int stat. He has held Lige Blast, and Hex. Not even caring anymore I let the ability scores pass, and just make him chose spells from his actual spell list. Session 2. I set the scene PCs are standing in the mouth of the cave. It's night, there is hanging moss, and a hawk frozen in its nest. The cave opening is 100 feet in the air, barren tundra around them with the only landmark being an audic barrow at the base of the mountain thereon. The party asks how they should get down, and they start weighing their options. The wizard, power wizard, and bard all have feather fall on their spell lists. The bard realizes this and plucks the hawk of feathers. A d100 roll later and he gets 37 feathers. He casts feather fall, and without saying anything, he jumps off the ledge. NPS show surprise. Orc stops the power wizard from jumping and tells him to not kill himself like that elf. They laugh, and with no RP they all jump off. NPS join them I hold back the urge for them all to roll percentile to see which six the spell actually work on. They all land in front of this Nordic crypt. The wizard rolls religion. I tell her that this was made by the Nords for two reasons. The first is made as a test of strength for their youth to prove themselves against. The second is because the only way to get to Sovngarde is to die in battle. Family members of Nords who do not die in battle make, or help fund, the creations of these tombs for the express reason of if their family member is slain by an adventurer in combat when they are a Draugr they also get to go to Sovngarde. So Draugr will give it their all when fighting but will also fight with honor, and won't try to use cheap tactics like sneak attacks. They are not zombies, they still cannot talk, but they have full knowledge of tactics. I set the scene, give some comments the NPS say, and talk about the main objects of the scene. The huge doors to the burrow, a statue of Shaw, basically Nord Odin, and a plaque that stated, only a true child of kind that convinces Shaw himself to open the way may enter this trial. The bard tries to use his persuasion skill on the statue, the fighter uses her religion skill to pray to shore, neither work. Power wizard starts complaining, and I basically tell them the answer to the puzzle. So if anyone is reading this and guesses the answer then I will tell you that you are right. They go to the antechamber, then they chose to go left, into the dungeon. Power wizard lobbies for a short rest so he can get his two magicka back from the charm person spell last session. I tell him okay, but you haven't eaten in a while so you will endure one level of exhaustion if you do not eat to ration and drink water. The group goes silent. Power Wizard informs me that if his character knew he needed to eat then he would have brought the food and water with him from the storage room. No one thinks his response is weird, and I just tell them to write three rations on all of their character sheets. They rest, and eat a ration. I describe their situation to them, how they sought shelter in the burrow, because of the impending blizzard, the door closed behind them, and now the only way to open them back up is to clear the dungeon. And a long arrest would require you to consume a ration or suffer a level of exhaustion. One of the NPS, a Dunmar girl of about 15, asks the fighter if she can watch after her baby on account having a child on your back is dangerous. And she cannot fight on account of being a prepubescent, because she is an elf. The fighter says no, and straps the baby onto her back. PCs explore the tomb, and comes to a large room. It has two levels the higher one they currently were on, and a lower story 20 feet down. The upper story was a 5 foot outcropping with no railing extending from the south and west sides of the room. Five sarcophagi were in the upper floor, in indention of the wall, three on the south side two on the east. In the northwest corner of the room was a staircase connecting the second story to the first. The power wizard decides that instead of taking the stairs he was going to take the 20 foot jump, and the warlock decides to go with him. Both pass acrobatics so no damage. When asked why not just go down the stairs he said why would I walk, or waste a spell slot. Annoyed I cut back up to the upper group, and asked what they were doing. The group consisted of the fight of the other wizard, the bard, and the two NPS that are not children. The fighter decides to open the sarcophagi in front of them for some reason, and the wizard decides to start helping her. She rolls an attack against the coffin with her sword. Hits, 
but the stone is resistant to slashing damage, and shrugs off anything below 5. Wizard decides to throw a fire bolt at it. We cut back to the power wizard in the warlock. On the lower story are four sarcophagi, and a stone pedestal with a skull on it. Wizard rolls our channel on the skull, the skull is magical. Wizard asks what it does, he doesn't have identify magic so I shrug. Power wizard decides if I won't tell him he will just spray us at it. The acid hits the skull knocking it off, and the section of stone the pedestal rested on rises Indiana Jones style, and all the sarcophagi pop open. I cut back to the group up top. I describe how the fire bolt hits the sarcophagi, and it pops open, and I tell everyone to roll initiative. Only three of the sarcophagi actually had Draugr in them. The other six did not infuse properly, or whatever, so they never reanimated. Two Draugr were on the lower floor. The one sarcophagus the upstairs group was messing with had the other one. Upstairs the fighter goes first uses her attack to attempt to cut into the Draugr with her long sword. Nat 1. She misses the Draugr completely as he reaches for his great axe, and the fighter's weapon tumbles to the ground. No one else can actually hit him because of the angle so the wizard and bard do nothing. The NPS do nothing because I never wanted them to fight in the first place. Downstairs Warlock uses Hex, and makes an attack with his short sword. Does like 6 damage, and runs away. I allow it because he technically had surprise. Power Wizard does 13 to both Draugr, and runs away. Both Draugr run after him, because the Draugr are not stupid, and assume the Warlock is just a fighter, but the one in cloth can't hit them from a distance. One rolls attack and does 7. Power Wizard looks at me pissed off. Upstairs the fighter relays intention to pick up her long sword, and make an attack. The sword is at the Draugr's feet. If you want to pick it up it's an interaction, and the Draugr gets an attack of opportunity. She looks disappointed, and I tell her that you can just pull out a different weapon like your flail. She sighs, but does it anyway and hits him for 7. Downstairs the Warlock looks, and sees the Power Wizard is in trouble. He decides that if his friend dies he will die too. He charges a Draugr rolls a crit, rolls max damage on his d6 for both his short sword and hex, twice, plus strength he did 26 damage. I roll undeared fort, but I fail the Draugr goes to sobbing guard. The power wizard takes the disengage action, and runs off past the warlock leaving the person who saved his life for dead. The Warlock attempts to punch the Power Wizard as he runs by as an attack of opportunity against the Power Wizard, I laugh and say sure. Rolls an at one. I draw a pillar on the map next to the Warlock, and inform him he hit the pillar by mistake, and he takes one damage. Power Wizard is pissed, but it's whatever because everyone else is laughing at it. The Draugr runs after him. Upstairs the Bard decides to stop wasting his time doing nothing and uses vicious mockery to give the downstairs Draugr disadvantage by shouting your mother was a ski ever. The fighter swings, and hits. The Draugr swings, and hits. The wizard continues to be useless. Downstairs the power wizard uses the disengage action again and continues to run. The warlock uses the help action on the Draugr to give him advantage. I describe how the warlock comforts the Draugr, by saying his mother was a beautiful woman that loves him. The Draugr still misses, but it was a beautiful moment, and the resolution to that Draugr's story arc that had been building since before any of our adventurers were born. Upstairs fighter swings, and hits. Draugr swings, and hits. Fighter is at 1 HP. Bard tells her that you can switch with one of the NPS, without taking an attack of opportunity. I have never heard of this rule, and I ask where did you find it? Bard shrugs, I'm pretty sure it's from Sayo. Players nod in agreement. MFW my players use an anim for justification for a 5e rule. I roll attack of opportunity against fighter. It misses, not that it matters because she would have just went to zero anyway, and be healed to full 5 sec later. Wizard continues to be useless, Bard heals fighter. Orc NPC attacks Draugr. Downstairs Warlock gives Draugr advantage. Power Wizard uses Thunder Shock almost outright kills Warlock. But he lives barely, just barely. Draugr makes the dex save, and hits the power wizard rolls 13 damage. The power wizard says that he is dead, even though I tell him he can just drop to zero. He says no, and he does not want to return next session. I say okay, but fighter convince him to come back for some reason. Upstairs next round the orc swings, 
and the fighter switches her mini with the orc so she can hit too. The orc gets one shot by the attack of opportunity and dies. The wood elf NPC starts to cry, but our band of murder hobos have seen this before so they do not care. Fighter kills Draugr, and the wizard continues to be useless. Downstairs Draugr uses the stabilize action on the warlock. Upstairs wizard finally decides to do something with her life, and launches a fire bolt at the Draugr. It brings him 1 HP over maximum. The Draugr will live if he gets better than a 2 on his undeared constitution. It gets a 1. It disintegrates, and I asked the warlock to roll perception, and he passes. For some reason, somehow he hears the Draugr thank him even as the Draugr's soul reaches Suvingard. After the game, the power wizard was pissed off. He held up his phone and showed me a Draugr statistic he got from the internet. He said why would you throw a group of LVL1 characters against a group of 3 level 4 Draugr. I handed him the monster statistics I had printed out, and he looked at them level 1. He compared the two, told me I was retarded, and that they were too hard to be CR1. I told him that the encounter would have been easy if you did not start the encounter early by being stupid. He asked me to stop being an asshole, and said that he would not be returning for a next session. I then told him there would be no next session, got my sister, and left. I did not keep going with this chain of events out of cowardice, but out of curiosity. I just wanted to know what playing with these kind of people was like, and while I would not do it again I am glad I did it because it gave me a funny story to tell people. And sure I could have dropped it session 0, but what did I lose by going to more session? I only made a couple of dungeons I fully intend to reuse for another group at another point. I did no prep on their individual characters so the only time I really waited was commute, and that's nothing for a story like this. Like seriously, you have to wonder about people like this. I'm sure you can smell the autism a mile away when you come in contact with these types. You know, like, it really, it really annoys me, you know, because it's really hard to get, like, you know, a genuine game and people. And, you know, it's just difficult. It's not easy. So, like, you know, you try and, like, the best you can to try and get a group together. You think it would be a lot of fun. And then one of them just says, yeah, I'm going to just straight up try and ruin this game. So I am. Like, go fuck yourself. Seriously, fucking go die. You know what I mean? Get that neck loop out. But, look, um, you know, the DM did do a few things stupid himself, you know, but nothing on par with the wizard. Although, I would say a lot of the problems with this group was just the player characters are just straight up unexperienced and they don't really know what they're getting themselves into and they don't really fully understand how to do it, you know. Um, so, there's a lot of issues there. But, like, you know, sometimes I, I like playing with people that don't really know what they're doing because I always just go with, you know, goal of kill. You know, it's like, like, fuck it. Let's just work away and just deal with it. You know, and let's just not make it too serious. Like, you know, just have fun. You know, that's the way I look at it. Just enjoy yourself and that's the most important thing, I think, when it comes to D&D because it's hard to get a group together. It's hard to get people all sitting in the same room and, you know, get prepared. And, you know, there's a lot to it. So when you can finally get that, you know, just enjoy it and don't try and take it too seriously a lot of time. Although there's nothing wrong with taking it too seriously. It's good if you can get the whole group on board, board with that. But look, I've gambled enough, for God's sake. Uh, let us know what you thought down below. Fuck, I need. To, <laughs> I felt like I needed to get that out of me almost. It was like, fuck me, what's wrong with them? But look, um, hope you boys enjoyed. Um, it's one of those ones for me, like, you know, uh, one of those stories. I, I just got annoyed with it more than anything. It's like, what are you doing? Stop it. But like, I suppose everyone kind of needs to experience that. At least once just to know what a good party is and a bad party and know your limits. You know what I mean? So, like, hope you boys enjoyed. Um, I'll talk to you later on in the next video and check out all the links below. And I'll see you then. All right. So I've recently moved Nick Badia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!